Good morning. I wanted to make this quick video to explain how safe or how dangerous snorkeling and freediving is in and around Cape Town, South Africa. That's a question that I get often. People ask me, aren't you scared of this? Aren't you scared of that? How can you go into the water? How can you snorkel around this area? How, you know, the fear of death is a big thing to people who don't really know anything about snorkeling or freediving and that's something that's on their mind so I wanted to make a video where I answer this question in detail first of all let me tell you a little bit about my own experience okay so I've been freediving and snorkeling in and around Cape Town for a little bit over three years so in the three years that I've been very active in snorkeling and freediving in and around Cape Town, around the Atlantic seaboard, around Falls Bay. I'm not aware of any incidents that have been fatal or where somebody got seriously injured while freediving or snorkeling. Okay, so that's just a bit of information for people who are very statistically orientated. However, you need to look in detail what are the contributing factors that have provided such a safe environment or what has made what are, what is the reason why snorkeling and freediving in and around Cape Town has had such a good track record at least over the last couple of years so let's get into that okay what are the contributing factors first of all the freediving community okay so there are probably at least three or four hundred people in and around Cape Town that are what we consider active snorkelers and freedivers who go into the water at least once or twice a month okay so there's a very big community now the thing about this community is that they are exceptionally good when it comes to communication I'm personally on like four WhatsApp groups just for freediving and snorkeling in and around Cape Town. One of the groups have got has got like nearly 200 members or over 200 members on it on one of the WhatsApp groups. So the advantage of this is that people are constantly sharing information and updates about conditions in the ocean. They share conditions about what the visibility is like, what the swell is like, what the surface chop is like, what the wind conditions are like in certain areas and so on. Sometimes you get daily communications, on some groups you're getting hourly communication about oh, I just drove past this spot, here's a photo of how it looks currently. So communication is a key thing. The reason why I believe the improvement in communication has improved the safety of snorkeling and freediving is because I think that in the past, before communication was as good as what it is today, people used to drive out to a spot to go and snorkel or freedive, not knowing the conditions up front, and now they drove all the way. Those of you who stay in Cape Town will know that the traffic is hectic. So now they drove for an hour to get to a spot to free dive or snorkel. And now the conditions are bad, the swell is terrible, there's a current, um, the surface wind is a problem. But now they don't want to drive all that way for nothing. So what do they do? They get into the water and they attempt snorkeling or free diving anyway. I think that was a major contribution in the past to drowning incidents as well as people maybe injuring themselves and hitting their heads on rocks or something because uh, sometimes entering and exiting the water can be quite challenging when the ocean conditions are not playing in your favor so uh, the freediving community is also very outspoken about warning people let me give you one example when i just started freediving and snorkeling i found videos on youtube where people were freediving the antapolis shipwreck and as soon as i became a qualified freediver i was on the freediving groups and i said hey guys i'm going to go and freedive the antapolis shipwreck and a lot of the people on the groups realized that i was at the time a new freediver and they immediately started warning me and they told me listen here the visibility 
at Antapolis is currently three or four meters, you cannot penetrate a shipwreck in three or four meter visibility conditions because you're going to bump your head. There's all sorts of risks. We will let you know when the conditions are right for you to go and, and free dive the Antapolis shipwreck and everybody will be there. You will know. You won't miss out on it. So they're very outspoken and uh, concerned about each other's safety and they will warn you when you're about to do something stupid that you may not, may not even have realized. Um, the other good thing about the community of freedivers in and around Cape Town is that there are plenty of people who are at least level one freediving certified. And then the other advantage is I don't think there is a place in and around South Africa that it has so many qualified freediving instructors as Cape Town. So that is a massive advantage, especially when it comes to surface rescue protocols and all of that. So, uh, because there are so many qualified freedivers and so many people willing to share information and give warnings and so many freediving instructors, there's a lot of stupid things that people that freedive and snorkel in Cape Town do not typically do because they've already been told, listen, that is something that's dangerous, you shouldn't do that. I would like to give you some examples of what you don't see that often in Cape Town. And when you do see that happening, you very quickly correct the person that you see. Okay. People who are holding their breath, diving under the water with a snorkel in their mouth. That is something that you don't see often in Cape Town, in and around Cape Town. 99% of people who attempt snorkeling or freediving have already been told, listen, you don't you take the snorkel out of your mouth before you duck dive and go down. Why? Well, you'll, you'll learn in a freediving course why not, but what the main reason is, is that the snorkel acts like a funnel if you get a shallow water blackout, which is something that's very rare. It hardly ever happens, but it is a, it is a real risk to freedivers. And if you've got a snorkel in your mouth and you black out, the, it acts like a funnel, funneling the water down your throat. You can't dive with the snorkel in your mouth, but you don't see that happening in Cape Town very often. Uh, one good thing about uh, another thing that people do well in, in and around Cape Town is that they use the proper fins. So there is a very big difference between kicking with scuba diving fins and kicking with proper free diving fins. Proper free diving fins has got a lot more power behind it and you're able to swim against surface wind as well as fight against currents under the water much easier. So you see most people wearing proper free diving fins, which is a great thing. You want also one very dangerous thing is diving, free diving and snorkeling in the ocean without any fins. That you also don't see that often in and around Cape Town. Uh, another thing that's that's good is that people are diving with wetsuits. So I want to I want to talk about wetsuits in and around Cape Town a little bit separately. I'll get into that, but that's a very good thing is that people are wearing wetsuits and they're wearing thick wetsuits. When I say thick, I mean 5.5 mil spear fishing open cell wetsuit. That is your most common wetsuit that people are wearing in and around Cape Town when snorkeling and free diving. Entering the ocean in zero visibility or harsh conditions. That doesn't happen very often. Again, it comes down to the communication on the groups. And then people do not often overweight themselves. And when you see somebody that has overweighted themselves, you quickly to relate to, to warn them and tell them, listen, you need to remove some weights. You're sinking. You're supposed to float on the surface when you're snorkeling. You're sinking. I haven't seen people overweight themselves. However, it is something that I always look for, even with new beginner freedivers and snorkelers. Now, I said I wanted to get back to the topic of wetsuits. So the thing about Cape Town, that the water on the Atlantic seaboard is an average of between 9 and 11, on a good day, maybe 12 degrees Celsius. Now, if you've been in and around Cape Town, you'll know that the water is ice cold. 10, 11 degrees Celsius water is ice cold. And I don't see how people can enter the, the water without a wetsuit or at least a three or a five more wetsuit. There is a small segment 
of freedivers that and snorkelers that go in without wetsuits, but it's a very small percentage. So for the most part, let's say over 90% of people are wearing thick wetsuits due to the cold water. I think that is probably one of the biggest contributing factors to the safety of freediving and snorkeling in Cape Town. So what are the advantages of wearing a thick wetsuit? Well, first of all, it protects you against the cold and the, uh, the ice cold water in Cape Town. So you're not going to easily cramp up so much and, you know, be constantly fighting off this cold, which is one advantage. But the major advantage is that it protects you from the ocean life and the environment. You know, scraping yourself against a rock or something can be an injury would have normally been an injury if you didn't have a thick wetsuit. Now there's blood involved because you don't have a wetsuit, but if you've got a wetsuit on, you don't even notice when you're going over the rock or scraping your chest or your arms or so against the rocks, which is great. Another thing of uh, advantage about wetsuits is that it protects you from things like um, uh, those blue bottles and jellyfish stings and stuff. Remember, if you're 100 or 200 meters out in the ocean, uh, a sting from the wrong from the wrong fish or the wrong uh, creature in the ocean could be life threatening. It could m maybe cause you not to be able to 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 get out of the water. So the protection from the wetsuit that is great. But the number one thing I think helps a lot with the thick wetsuit is the buoyancy that it creates. So I think drowning is probably the biggest risk for anybody snorkeling or freediving. People tend to think it's sharks or it's this or that. I personally think drowning is the biggest risk in snorkeling and freediving. So when the people are wearing thick wetsuits due to the ice cold waters, wetsuit is very buoyant. If you don't have any weights on, you will struggle to duck dive down to 5 or 10 meters without any weights if you've got a 5.5 mil wetsuit, especially if you haven't been trained how to duck dive professionally like a free diver so that is a very uh, a very good thing so with the free diving community the other thing is that people don't dive alone you don't often encounter somebody diving alone you know if you do you'll say hey, where's your dive buddy you know people often say here's my dive buddy so with the communication on the groups people don't dive alone they don't dive with snorkels in their mouth they don't drive out of their way to poor conditions because the communication on the groups are very good Another contributing factor, let's talk about sharks a little bit because people like to talk about sharks. Look, there's been a change in the migration patterns of the sharks due to the orcas that are now in and around False Bay. On the Atlantic side of Cape Town waters, there hardly is any sharks. I don't know of people who've ever spotted a shark on the Atlantic side. Maybe they have been and I just don't know about it. But on the False Bay, False Bay is renowned for sharks. But there hasn't been any, at least not great white shark activities in the last couple of years due to the orcas that are in the area. You've got to understand that um, there are beaches that, like Amanzim Toti, for example, has got the world record for the most shark attacks. But Amanzim Toti hasn't had a shark attack in the last 30 or 40 years because the sharks have now migrated away from that area. I believe that the same thing has happened in Cape Town, at least for the moment, while the orcas are very active in the area, you won't easily encounter, especially big sharks, they move out of the way because orcas, you know, attack and kill sharks and I think they eat their liver. And another nice thing about the orcas is that in the open water, an orca has never, there's not a single documented incident where an orca has attacked a human. Orcas only attack humans when they are in closed environment, when they're in captivity, for example. So, um, look, I recommend always to do a free diving course and, you know, get in touch with the free diving community before you go out there. And remember, never dive alone, always dive with a buddy. I hope this video has helped you. Have a nice day.